Easter, happy Easter. I hope you guys are having a great celebration at home. Uh, it would be so fun to be together, to celebrate together, but I know that you guys are enjoying this time and celebrating as a family, and that's incredible. If you got your lesson materials that Miss Rachel and I put together, um, you'll in your lesson, you're going to go through all the way at the beginning, the big God story at the very beginning, how God created everything and he created Adam and Eve and then sin entered the world. And from that point on, God had promised that he was gonna send a redeemer. He was gonna send a savior. He was gonna send this person who was going to take away all of the sin that we have. And if you remember in our reading a couple of days ago on Good Friday, we talked about who that redeemer was and who that person was that died on a cross for our sins. But we said at the end of the video that that is not the end of the story. And so today, if you wanna grab your Jesus Storybook Bible, we're gonna to go to the next part of that story about what happened three days later. So if you have your book, you can turn it to page 310 and we're going to read the rest of the story and what took place. This is God's Wonderful Surprise, which I think is an amazing title for this. So if you have your Bibles, read along as we um, find out what happened next. Jesus' friends were sad. They would never see their best friend again. How could this happen? Wasn't Jesus the rescuer, the king God had promised? It wasn't supposed to end like this. Yes, but whoever said anything about the end? Just before sunrise on the third day, God sent an earthquake, an angel from heaven. When the guards saw the angel, they fell down with fright. The angel rolled the huge stone away, sat on top of it, and waited. At the first glimmer of dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other women headed to the tomb to wash Jesus' body. The early morning sun slanted through the ancient olive trees. Drops of dew glittered on the leaves and grasses. Little tears everywhere. The friends walked quietly along the hilly path through the olive groves until they reached the tomb and immediately noticed something odd. It was wide open. They peered through the opening into the dark tomb. But wait, Jesus' body was gone. And something else, a shiny man was there with clothes made from lightning. Don't be scared, the angel said. But they couldn't help it. They screamed anyway. And the angel asked them, what are you doing here? This is a tomb and tombs are for dead people. The women couldn't speak. Jesus isn't dead anymore, he said. He's alive. And their hearts leapt, and then the angel laughed with such gladness that they felt for the moment, as if they had awoken from a nightmare. The other women rushed home, but Mary stayed behind. How could it be true? Jesus was definitely dead. How could he be alive? Just then, Mary heard someone else in the garden. Hmm, perhaps it's the gardener, she thought. He'll know where Jesus' body is. I don't know where Jesus is, Mary said urgently. I can't find him. But it was all right. Jesus knew where she was, and he had found her. Mary? Only one person said her name like that. She could hear her heart thumping. She turned around. She could just make out a figure. She shaded her eyes to see and thought she was dreaming. But she wasn't dreaming. She was seeing Jesus. Mary fell to the ground. Sudden tears filled her eyes and great sobs shook her whole body. And she wanted in that moment to cling to Jesus and to never let him go. You'll be able to hold on to me later, Mary, Jesus said gently, and always be close to me. But now, 
Go and tell the others that I am alive. Mary ran and ran all the way to the city. She had never run so fast or so far in all her life. She felt she could have run forever. She didn't even feel like her feet touched the ground. The sun seemed to be dancing and gleaming and bounding across the sky, racing with her and shining brighter than she could ever remember in the clear, fresh air. And it seemed to her that morning, as she ran, almost as if the whole world had been made anew, almost as if the whole world was singing for joy, the trees, tiny sounds in the grass, the birds, her heart. Was God really making everything sad come untrue? Was he making even death come untrue? She couldn't wait to tell Jesus' friends. They won't believe it, she laughed. And she was right, of course. So Mary and her friends who had gone to the tomb to see Jesus found he was not there. And she realized that who he was and who he said he was and what he was there to do was really true. And the picture in that story of Mary just running and running and it felt like her feet never even touched the ground. There was so much joy. That's the same kind of joy that we can have because we know that Jesus is the Redeemer. He is the Savior. He came and he died for us. But he's not dead anymore. He is alive and he is well and he is living in heaven and he's watching over and he's taking care of us all the time. That's the promise that we have. We have a Savior who loves us, who cares about us, and who will always be there for us. I'm really excited to be able to share this story with you today, and I hope that as you go through this day, you remember who Jesus is, and that he is the Savior that God sent because he loves us so much. Happy Easter, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.